is the car that at last has put Japanese luxury brand Infiniti on the map in Europe. The Q30 is the company's first compact car, its first European built model, and in many ways its first really credible segment competitive contender. Which is just as well, since this premium small hatch targets tough rivals like Audi's A3, BMW's 1 Series, and the car it's based upon, Mercedes A Class. It's a difficult brief. So let's see if this is you. You need a focus sized family hatch, but you want a nicer premium badged one. Maybe you've tried the BMW 1 Series, the Audi A3 and the Mercedes A-Class models that almost everyone seems to have in the segment, but you would like something a bit different. I mean, seeking that, you found the Volvo V40 to be a little dull and an Alfa Romeo Giulietta to be rather compromised. Were you to be such a customer? Well, then we'd probably point you towards the car we're trying here, Infiniti's Q30. Of course, it is entirely possible that your route towards interest in this car has been nothing like as logically structured as that. Perhaps you've just seen a Q30, you like the look of it, and you want to know whether it would make sense as an alternative to whatever more conventionally branded model you're either driving or thinking of buying at the moment. Either way, it is quite likely that you know little or nothing about Infiniti. So let's start there. This is Nissan's luxury brand, founded in 1989, the same year that Toyota created Lexus to fulfill the same purpose. Lexus, of course, quickly became a worldwide nameplate, but Infiniti initially stayed focused on lucrative luxury markets like the US and the Middle East. By the early 2000s, though, the brand had lazily drifted into simply rebadging Nissan models and was nearly scrapped before Nissan Motors president Carlos Ghosn developed a business strategy that would give the company its own identity, push it properly up market and launch it into Europe. Now that took time. It wasn't until 2009 that Infiniti was introduced into the UK and even then its impact was tiny thanks to a minuscule dealer network and a pricey product range that prioritised thirsty petrol power. Even worse, there were no compact, affordable volume models to drive sales. Things have gradually picked up since though, first with the 2013 launch of the brand's more accessible BMW 3 Series size Q50 saloon and then more significantly with the introduction of this smaller Q30 hatch in the autumn of 2015. The Q30 is the company's first European-made product, built in Nissan's UK factory in Sunderland alongside the Nissan Qashqai model, whose underpinnings you would expect it to copy, given that Infiniti didn't have either time or the money to develop this car from scratch. Actually, though, this design's fundamentals come from an altogether different and entirely more appropriate source. Nissan's alliance with Daimler allowing the Q30 to be based very heavily on one of the key contenders that it must beat, the Mercedes A-Class. From this starting point, though, Infiniti has tried to create a more individual end result in terms of the styling, the cabin feel and the driving experience. It is an unlikely confection, but does it work? Let's find out. Infinity here has set its stall out not to copy its German competitors at their own game. But how do you avoid copying Teutonic rivals if the car you're developing is fundamentally based on one of them? More specifically in this case, can this Q30 take all that's desirable from the dynamic talents of the Mercedes A-Class that it's based on while keeping its own distinct and rather different character? It'll be interesting to see. We almost take it for granted that a premium compact hatch of this kind must be sporty. Now, Infinity doesn't. In fact, its promotional material is peppered with words like relaxing and comfortable rather than responsive and rewarding, leaving potential buyers in little doubt as to the priorities the Japanese brand thinks a car of this kind really ought to have. It's a perspective that must have left their engineers at Cranford in Bedfordshire with something of a headache, given that the A-Class derived suspension setup that this car must ride on has been roundly criticised as being unforgivingly over firm. 
So much so that for the revised A-Class model this Q30 must compete against, Mercedes has had to introduce an electronically controlled selective damping system to try and do something about it. Infiniti didn't have access to that selective damping setup when they were creating this model. Mercedes wanted to save that fix for themselves. So instead, the Q30 development team had to sort out the ride of this car the old-fashioned way, pounding all kinds of global roads and labouring through over 50 spring and damper variations before finally seizing upon a setting. And we think they've chosen the right one. It wasn't hard to improve upon the fidgety ride of the A-Class, but the supple poise you get here is also better than just about anything else on offer in this segment and makes this Infinity a great long-distance companion. That's an attribute further emphasised by superb ergonomically crafted seats designed to reduce back pain and class leading standards of refinement. Interior noise levels apparently register as being 10% quieter than direct rivals. Inevitably, there is a slight dynamic downside to this. Uh, come to the car expecting the kind of involving experience you get in a BMW 1 Series or even in an Audi A3 and you will go away disappointed. There's slightly more body roll than you get on those rivals, something exacerbated by this model's slightly higher ride height. Although, to be fair, you get just as much grip and traction through the bends. Rather surprisingly, the steering response is just as sharp too, although unfortunately this isn't matched by much feel for what the front wheels are doing. Still, this electric steering setup is a lot better than the lifeless fly-by-wire system that Infiniti uses on its larger Q50 saloon. Steering is one of the parameters that you might expect to be able to alter uh, via the sort of driving mode system that's now becoming common in this class. The kind of setup that alters not only the feel at the helm, but also the throttle response, the engine note, and the stability control thresholds. Now, Infinity doesn't offer that here, although on automatic variants like the one I've got today, there is a drive mode selector that tweaks the response of the gearbox via manual, eco, or sport modes. The auto transmission in question is a seven-speed dual clutch unit with steering wheel paddle shifters, and you have to have it if you want the engine we've chosen to test, the top 170 PS 2.2 litre diesel. Now, like all the power plants this Q30 uses, this one is lifted direct from the A-Class, but is embellished here with a couple of features that Infiniti is rather proud of. Active noise cancellation plays a big part in creating the impressive levels of refinement I was just talking about. That's one of those setups that plays sound waves through the door speakers in order to counteract engine noise that might otherwise distract or fatigue the driver. Similar but different is active sound enhancement. Here, clever software monitors your speed and your throttle position and works to smooth out any variations in engine tone by emitting what the engineers describe as a positive musical chord through the speakers. I must admit to not being able to hear it, but maybe that's just the point. As for the 2.2 litre diesel itself, well, to be more accurate, it's actually only just over 2.1 litres in size. Well, there is a decent span of performance on offer that sees 62 miles an hour reached in 8.3 seconds en route to 137 miles an hour, along with 350 newton metres of torque. That's enough to allow this car to tug along a brake trailer of up to 1,200 kilograms in weight. With this unit, buyers also get the option of the all-wheel drive setup that we're trying here, one of those that reacts instantly to tractional changes and can, if necessary, push up to 50% of torque to the rear axle should conditions demand it. This all-wheel drive system is also offered on the uh, minority interest 2.0-litre turbo petrol variant, another power plant available only with the 7DCT auto transmission. This one puts out 211 PS and in front-driven form uh, makes 62 miles an hour in 7.2 seconds on the way to 146 miles an hour. Go for this 2.0-litre T derivative and you have to have sport trim, which means a lower ride height, larger 19-inch wheels and damping that's 7% stiffer. Now, for us, uh, that uh, is a package that rather spoils this Infiniti's pleasantly relaxing demeanour. If you really want the feel of a 1 Series, then you'll find that BMW make a rather good one. The Q30, in contrast, does, as we've been suggesting, play to a different crowd and does so primarily using lower-powered engines than the ones I've briefed you on so far. 
The entry point for the lineup is uh, marked by a 1.6 litre petrol turbo variant that offers 122 PS in six speed manual, guys. Good enough to take you to 62 miles an hour in 9.4 seconds on route to 124 miles an hour. Specify it with seven DCT auto transmission and a tweak in the software ups power to 156 PS and improves those performance figures to 8.9 seconds and 134 miles an hour if you're quick with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. The alternative is a 109 PS 1.5 litre diesel, also offered with either manual or auto transmission. Now on paper, this derivative looks much slower than its petrol counterpart. 62 miles an hour takes 11.9 seconds en route to 118 miles an hour. Thanks to 260 newton meters of torque though, this variant, if anything, feels slightly more responsive through the rev range. Visually, this car simply has to offer something different in the segment if it's to have any chance at all of making sales headway against the established opposition. Fortunately, it does. Styled at Nissan's Paddington Design Studio in London, the Q30 shape is a riot of dramatic curves and turbulent lines, enabling it to stand out in a way that makes German prestige-branded rivals look very conservative indeed. Let's start here at the front, where the double-arched grille uh, with its 3D mesh is more interestingly crafted than it is on the brand's bigger Q50 saloon, larger in size and flowing more fluidly into headlamps that use LED technology on plusher models like this one. Uh, the fog lamps use LEDs too, mounted in swept back corner air intakes and positioned either side of a chromed lower finishing strip that, as an option, can be trimmed in either red or purple. It's from the side, though, that this car arguably looks most distinctive, with a coupe-like profile emphasised by this signature touch, a uh, chromed crescent-shaped C-pillar supposed to suggest motion even when the car's stationary. Now, this is actually a slightly bigger car than the Mercedes A-Class it's based on, but the Q30's 126mm increase in length is artfully disguised by sweeping bodywork creases that draw the eye this way and that. An upper swage line that falls gradually from the high bonnet into the rear door handle then rises again into the powerful haunches. A lower one flows up between the black trimmed wheel arches. And this sill line is beautifully embellished with these darkly lacquered extensions. Even the 18 or 19 inch alloy wheels have been carefully considered, fashioned using a laser cut process that allows precise application of accent colors uh, to complete a personalization process that will be so important for likely buyers. And making the rearward perspective equally unique uh, was more difficult, but Infinity stylists have done their best. LED tail lamps illuminate with a piercing nighttime signature, while the whole coupe theme is emphasised by the small glass area, this neat rooftop spoiler, and this powerful lower diffuser with its chromed rear tailpipes. You go for the sport model, and these exhausts are trimmed in black as part of a package of changes that see that derivative lowered by 15 millimetres on firmer sport suspension. Now, time to move inside. Is it as stylish and eye-catching in here as the exterior panel work suggests that it might be? Well, no. Still, it is pretty nice all the same. And you only realise why once you start to inspect the fixtures and fittings in a little more detail. Take this chromed dashboard trimming. Now, with Rivals, this would be silvered plastic. Here, it's fashioned with a much nicer, cool-to-the-touch, satin chrome-plated finish. Shifter goes to the ceiling fabric, it's Dynamica, a lovely Italian suede-like material used increasingly in the high fashion industry. Plusher models like this one, of course, feel even more upmarket, with upholstery finished either in a combination of leatherette and alcantara, or as here, in full stitched soft nappa leather that's also extended to cover the dash top. We particularly like the brilliant spinal support seats designed to match the curvature of your back and reduce fatigue on long journeys by up to 30%. Journalists have made plenty of the fact that so much of this cabin is put together using borrowed Mercedes A-Class parts, which is certainly true. Uh, the clearly defined instrument binnacle gauges and the useful information screen that separates them come straight from that Merc. Uh, so does the wiper stalk, uh, the climate controls, and virtually all of the switches and buttons. Even 
even the chrome key is the same. But then, so what? I mean, quite a lot of the stuff that you find in an Audi A3 is from a Golf, and there's plenty in the BMW 1 Series that's also used in a Mini. I mean, no one complains about that, do they? Anyway, fortunately, Infiniti has been wise enough not to copy Mercedes too closely when it comes to interior ergonomics. So, for example, on an auto variant like this one, you don't get the overloaded steering column gear change dock that you have to deal with on an A-Class. There's instead a proper leather-trimmed gear stick. Nor are you stuck with a kind of centre dash infotainment screen that, on a rival A-Class, looks like an iPad glued to the fascia as an afterthought. Here, the 7-inch colour display provided is beautifully built into the flowing curves of the dash top and proves to be usefully informative, with Bluetooth phone and audio functions easy to operate using either voice, touch or this intuitive controller behind the gear lever. Here we've got Infinity's optional in-touch system, which, if you can afford it, does quite a lot more. There's navigation, of course, the usual Nissan-derived bird's-eye view system, and the DAB tuner, which, rather disappointingly, is omitted from the standard setup. There's also an info section with useful traffic reports and an eco-drive report feature that grades the frugality of your progress. In addition, you get an apps section that delivers a clock and a compass, along with access to your emails and your personal calendar, plus a maintenance note area for updating your Q30's service status. Of course, there are a few things we'd change. Um, the hidden handbrake switch, for example, the unlined door bins, that's not very premium, and the fact that the storage compartment in front of the gear lever incorporates twin USB points but isn't large enough for most modern smartphones. Now, that is annoying if you've got the in-touch infotainment setup and you want to use its included smartphone mirroring system, as that requires the handset to be hardwired in via the USB port before the mirror link feature will work. Otherwise, though, the interior practicalities appear to have been reasonably well thought through. The glove box and door pockets will both take a 500 milliliter bottle of water, and there are twin cup holders behind the gear stick with a deep uh, covered box containing a 12 volt socket just behind them. You also get a small fold out compartment below the front passenger seat and a side storage net in the front passenger footwell. <clears throat> Time to take a seat in the back. Now, the curve of the rear side windows and the amount that the rear wheel arches intrude into the door openings mean that getting in isn't quite as easy as it would be in a more conventional focus size C-segment hatch, although the process is helped by the way that the doors open right out to nearly 90 degrees. It's also pretty snug once you get yourself installed inside. Uh, the swept-back coupe-style roofline means that taller folk will find headroom to be at something of a premium, and there's even less legroom than you get in an A-Class, which is slightly disappointing, given this Q30 model's extra length. Fortunately, this is slightly mitigated by the ease with which you can slide your feet beneath the seats in front. Now, as usual with a car of this class, expecting to comfortably carry three people is ambitious, limited by this prominently raised centre transmission tunnel. Two modestly proportioned folks should be fine, though, and on plusher models, they'll be served by this fold-down centre armrest with its neat clip-out cup holders. So, on to the boot. Well, there's no option to specify electric operation for this rear hatch, which in this case is a pity, as it is a touch heavy to lift. And um, with power operation, you wouldn't notice the number plate rattle you get when shutting it either. When it is raised, though, a wise hatch opening is revealed, along with a boot lip that isn't too prominent. Infinity reckons you could get two large suitcases in here. We're not quite so sure, but certainly two medium cases and some soft bags would go on without a problem. The 368 litre capacity total is a little more than you get in an A-Class, quite a lot more than you get in a Volvo V40 or Alfa Giulietta, but directly comparable with the room on offer from an Audi A3 or a BMW 1 Series. You don't get the kind of adjustable height boot floor that would allow you a little more flexibility in using this area. You do, though, get the usual tie-down hooks and a 12-volt socket. Plus, the absence of a proper spare wheel means that you might fit a few smaller items in below floor level. 
Well, you might if you haven't specified the optional Bose sound system. <laughs> As you can see, the subwoofer for that occupies the extra space down here that you'd otherwise have and incidentally makes adding in a temporary spare wheel impossible. Plusher models uh, like this one get a useful ski hatch so that you can push longer items through into the cabin and push forward the 60 floaty uh, split seatbacks and the space revealed, although not quite flat, is reasonably large with 1,223 litres on offer. Infinity have pitched this new car unashamedly into premium territory with prices sitting in the same 20 to 30,000 pound bracket common to the premium brand compact hatch rivals that this car wants to target. At the foot of the range, there's an entry level 1.6T turbo petrol unit offered with 122 PS in manual form or 156 PS if mated with the brand's 7 speed, 7 DCT auto gearbox. Most potential buyers, though, will probably want to find the extra thousand pounds to get themselves the alternative 1.5 litre diesel, also offered with a 7 DCT auto option. Now, if you're prepared to find at least £25,000, then uh, you'll be able to consider the power plant that we've been trying here. A 170 PS 2.2 litre diesel, which only comes mated to the 7DCT auto box. Avoid entry level trim with this unit and you'll get the £1,550 option of intelligent all wheel drive if you want it. Now, the most powerful engine in the range is a 211 PS 2 litre petrol turbo. This comes only in plush sport trim with a price tag just above £30,000. And again, there's the option of all wheel drive if you'd like it for around £1,500 more. Across the Q30 range, a single five door body style is being offered. But if you're interested in the 2.2 litre automatic all wheel drive configuration that we're trying here, then there's also the option of ordering it with the QX30 body style. That's much the same as this one, but Infinity attempts to justify the QX version's £2,200 price premium with a package of SUV styling cues, including 30 millimetres more ride height, wider wheel arches and roof rails. So enough on range semantics, how does the Q30 value proposition stack up against obvious rivals? And more specifically, how does that proposition measure up against the three German models that rule the premium compact hatch segment? Mercedes A-Class, BMW's 1 Series and the Audi A3. Now it's probably most interesting to start with the Mercedes, that being the car that this Infiniti is heavily based on. All this Q30's engines are shared with the A-Class, and if you compare like with like, there's very little price difference between the two cars in their volume 1.6 litre petrol and 1.5 litre diesel geysers, although this Japanese contender is inevitably better equipped. Infiniti's decision to offer the 170 brake horsepower 2.2 litre diesel unit with entry level trim though, makes this engine much more accessible in this car. A Q30 2.2D costs from around £25,000. A mechanically identical A220D, though, costs from around £28,500. So, on to the BMW 1 Series and the Audi A3. Now, like its A-Class cousin, this Q30 is at an immediate disadvantage to these two cars because it can't be ordered with a three-door body style. Now, if you look at the five-door options, though, and the volume low-powered petrol and diesel models, you'll find that an A3 is priced very comparably against this Infiniti, but the 1 Series costs slightly more, though it does offer a little extra performance in compensation. Further up the range, rival BMW 118D and A3 Sportback 2.0-litre TDI 150 PS diesel models will both save you around £1,000 or so over this directly comparable Q30 2.2D, but they aren't as well equipped. If you were looking at a Q30 2.2D with all-wheel drive, though, you'd find that the equivalent 1 Series and A3 four-wheel drive diesel models would cost you around £1,500 more. Beyond those obvious German alternatives, there are a few other premium compact models potential Q3 buyers might also be looking at. Uh, Volvo's V40, the Mini Clubman and the Citroen-derived DS4 are three possible options, all similarly priced against this car. If you were looking at the entry-level petrol or diesel versions of this Q30 and wanted to try something different, then you might also want to consider that the same sort of money would buy you Lexus's similarly-sized CT200H petrol-electric hybrid. 
might also be worth mentioning that this Infiniti has also been very similarly priced to directly equivalent versions of the Volkswagen Golf. And in comparison to that car, it seems to offer a much more upmarket feeling package. Now that we've mentioned the Golf, uh, I should also tell you that uh, more ordinary volume branded family hatchbacks, cars like equivalent versions of Ford's Focus, Renault's Megane or the Honda Civic will probably save you £2,000 or more over the cost of this car. But then you get what you don't pay for. Most premium hatch buyers think that the extra cash uh, will get them a much more palatable motoring lifestyle. If having considered that, you agree and you've decided that you are prepared to give Infinity a try in this segment, then one of the things that you'll probably be hoping might justify your decision will be a generous standard equipment tally. So, is that what you get here? Well, let's see. Even entry-level SE spec Q30 variants get 18-inch alloy wheels, LED technology for the rear lamps and the daytime running lights, rear parking sensors and an ultrasonic alarm. Inside, there's a multifunction leather-trimmed steering wheel and a 7-inch touch-sensitive infotainment screen with voice recognition via which you can access Bluetooth phone connectivity and a six-speaker audio system with iPod and twin USB ports. We think Q30 buyers will also appreciate the little touches, like the heated washer jets and lovely black lacquer interior trim. From this point in the lineup, there are two choices. Either pay Infinity around £1,000 more to upgrade to premium trim, which will get you features like LED front fog lamps, a chromed exhaust, rain sensing wipers, an auto dimming rear view mirror, uh, power folding mirrors, climate control, heated front seats, and cruise control with a speed limiter, or stick with the base SE variant, but pay around £2,300 more to have it fitted with the optional business pack, which gets you all those premium premium trim features, along with the in-touch navigation system that includes a DAB radio. Now, if you can afford to go further up the range, the next stage lies with the plush-up premium tech spec that we have here. This upgrades the interior with lovely Nappa leather for the seat facings and the dashboard top, along with wood trim and niceties like a rear-view camera, a rear centre armrest and a ski hatch so you can poke longer items through from the boot. Beyond that, sport variants give you larger 19-inch alloy wheels and aluminium pedals, while the top business executive models have part Alcantara trim and that Infinity in-touch navigation system. As usual with a car of this kind, we would suggest that you buy in lower down the range and then carefully select a few well-chosen extras. Uh, maybe the tech pack that gives you a keyless entry system, a rear view camera, front parking sensors and an around view monitor camera setup. You might also want to look at adding uh, things like roof rails, a glass panoramic roof, all the desirable Bose premium audio system that we've got here. If you're a typical Q30 buyer, you'll also be wanting to give your car a more distinctive look and feel, uh, maybe with metallic paint. This liquid copper shade is lovely, for example. Or perhaps with one of the style packs that Infinity offers. These include the Cafe Teak and Gallery White options that give you appropriately coloured leather trim, privacy glass and your choice of 18 or 19 inch alloy wheels. Buyers of premium and sport trimmed models will also be offered the option of city black packs that include Alcantara and leather seat facings, privacy glass and a navigation system. If you get your city black pack with a premium model, then you can choose to upgrade your wheels and get it with a sport variant and Infinity will throw in that tech pack I was telling you about earlier. Finally, you might want to look at one of the design packs. The exterior one gives you a front bumper finisher in red or purple, carbon look side sills, a chrome tailgate finisher and carbon look mirror caps. The interior one, meanwhile, includes illuminated door sills, premium textile carpet mats and a reversible boot floor liner with a washable underside so you can turn it over to carry muddy boots or muddy dogs. While we're talking practicalities, well, we'd want to look at the net Infinity offers to stop items rolling around in the boot, or maybe the trunk organiser that lets you compartmentalise your items. Uh, there are coat hangers that go on the back of the front head restraints, and the usual roof rails and attachments to carry roof boxes, bikes, skis and snowboards, plus mud guards and a tow bar. 
On to safety. Now, all the standard features that rivals offer are in evidence right across the range. That means the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control, plus tyre pressure monitoring and twin front side and curtain airbags, along with the driver's knee bag. Uh, emergency stops are aided by adaptive brake assist, while uphill starts are facilitated by hill start assist. More significantly, though, Infinity also offers uh, autonomous braking technology as standard across the range, a system called Forward Collision Warning and Stop. And it's one of those that scans the road ahead as you drive, looking for potential collision hazards. If one's detected, then you'll be warned. Now, if you don't respond or you aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. It's also worth pointing out that, provided you avoid entry-level trim, a lane departure warning system is also included to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. And if your Q30 comes equipped with the in-touch navigation system, then you'll also get a traffic sign recognition feature that'll picture road signs as you pass them and then display them for you on the facial infotainment screen. Plusher models also get a smart beam auto headlamp system that for nighttime driving automatically dips your beams for you in the face of oncoming traffic. If you want to go further, then there's an optional safety pack that packages up that around view monitor camera system I mentioned earlier with a blind spot warning system uh, that when on the move will stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake. Uh, opt to add a safety pack to a Q30 equipped with auto transmission and it'll additionally come with ICC, Intelligent Cruise Control, that uses a radar to automatically keep you a safe distance behind the car in front at highway speeds. Ah uh, yes, cost of ownership efficiency. Well, the folk at Infinity must have pretty much expected that aspect of the car's development to take care of itself, given the borrowed Mercedes A-Class underpinnings. After all, the most efficient engine on offer here, a 1.5-litre diesel, enables an A180D to deliver a class-leading return of over 80 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 89 grams per kilometre of CO2 in manual form. Get somewhere close to that kind of showing and volume diesel versions of this Q30 could quite justifiably claim to have got the efficiency box well and truly ticked. As it is, the Q30 1.5D model in question only manages 68.9 miles per gallon and 108 grams per kilometre of CO2. Even a taller Nissan Qashqai crossover fitted with this engine does better than that. The reason Infiniti hasn't got nearer to the class standard here also constitutes its justification for not doing so. Weight. A Q30 weighs in at just over one and a half tonnes, around 50 kilograms or the weight of one of your kids, more than a comparable A-class. Now we guess that a lot of that increases down to the extra noise insulation that the Japanese brand uses to very successfully keep occupants of this model away from all the diesel clatter. And isn't the extra refinement worth a small extra running cost price hike? Particularly as the car in question still does nearly 70 miles per gallon and under 110 grams per kilometre of CO2. Well, Infinity hopes that showroom argument will be a convincing one. Here we're trying the auto-only 2.2-litre diesel model, a car that gets a little closer to the figures of its identically engined A220D counterpart. Infinity quotes 64.2 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 115 grams per kilometre of CO2 for the two-wheel drive variant, or 57.6 miles per gallon and 127 grams per kilometre of CO2 if you go for this four-wheel drive version. If you switch your focus to petrol power, you'll find the base 1.6T turbo unit capable of 47.1 miles per gallon and 138 grams per kilometre of CO2, aided by a clever Camtronic load management system that reduces throttling losses under partial load, thereby improving fuel consumption by up to 10%. The petrol turbo 2-litre T model doesn't cost much more to run than that, or at least it doesn't in two-wheel drive form, where the returns are 45.6 miles per gallon and 153 grams per kilometre. Go for the four-wheel drive model, and those figures fall to 42.2 miles per gallon and 156 grams per kilometre. To help you get somewhere near those quoted figures, there's an EcoDrive report section of the infotainment screen that grades your driving based on start-off, cruise and decelerating criteria before giving you graphical evidence of your success, or otherwise, in achieving maximum frugality. 
On an automatic model, you also get a drive mode selector with a selectable eco mode, which adjusts gear change timings in a bid for maximum system frugality. Plus, as you'd expect, there's a stop-start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or when you're waiting at the lights. What else? Uh, well, residuals are better than you'd expect they might be from a relatively unknown brand. Independent experts cap anticipate that this 2.2-litre diesel Q30 model will still be worth around 39% of its original purchase price after the usual industry standard three-year 60,000-mile ownership period. Now, that's not far away from the kind of figure you get from German opposition rivals and obviously is considerably better than you'd find with a mainstream branded C-segment model of this size. The warranty is the usual three-year, 60,000-mile affair, although this one is very comprehensive, even dealing with any minor imperfections in the paint finish. You can extend the cover if you want to for up to another three years, which you might want to, given that it includes full access to Infinity Mobile Services roadside assistance, which will cover you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, while the car remains under warranty. In the unlikely event that your Q30 should strand you by the roadside ever, uh, leaving you needing a hotel or a replacement vehicle, then this package will provide premium class accommodation and a courtesy car. And should you need to continue your travel urgently following such a breakdown, then you'll be flown there business class. It's all very thoughtful. On to the systems and after sales backup that allow you to look after this car so it'll never be likely to go wrong in the first place. Now, the display in the middle of the instrument binnacle has a maintenance indicator that counts down the time to your next service, um, while the center dash infotainment screens app section has a useful maintenance note section on which wear and tear notes and lifestyle cycles of all key parts can be entered. Now, when it comes to actual garage visits, there's obviously the issue of the Mark's limited dealer network. Um, at the launch of this Q30, there were only 13 Infinity Centres in the UK. Now, the brand has made efforts to add new dealers since, but it's still quite possible that you could find yourself some distance from uh, your nearest franchise when the time comes for a routine service visit. Now, assuming that isn't an issue for you, then other problems ought to be few and far between. Uh, and a range of prepaid service contracts are also available to cover you for three, four or five years. Handily, these are fully transferable upon sale. Finally, let's talk about insurance. Uh, groupings are directly comparable to those of key rivals, so no nasty surprises should be in store, whichever variant you select. For the base 1.6 litre, 1.6 T petrol model, you're looking at group 15 or 16 E, which rises to group 19 or 20 E if you go for the automatic version. Choose the two litre petrol variant and you're looking at group 26 E for the two wheel drive version and 25 E for the four wheel drive variant. If you switch your focus to diesel power, you're looking at a rating of uh, group 13 or 14 E for the 1.5 D or groups 21 or 22 for the 2.2 D variants. There's no doubt that Infinity is closer than it's ever been before to its goal of premium market credibility. It'll need a much larger dealer network, of course, to really bother the established brands. But to achieve that, it also needs a strong product range filled with more cars like this Q30. We can see why this uh, model is driving the sales figures forward. From the outside, at least, the look is distinctly different and, and to most eyes, really very stylish. Yes, under the skin, the car borrows much from the Mercedes A-Class, but there's no reason why the average buyer would know that or care very much if they did. Anyway, what's wrong with borrowing underpinnings from Mercedes? It's much better than sharing them with a Nissan Pulsar, and that's the kind of setup this Q30 probably would have used had it been developed by Infiniti in less enlightened times. Impressively, Infiniti has in some ways been able to improve on the Mercedes recipe for success in this class. A Q30 is more refined than an A-Class, plus it offers a better standard of ride and has a larger boot. On the downside, running cost efficiency here isn't quite up to the same standard. So as usual, it all comes down to what you want. But if what you want is a premium compact hatch that's just a little bit different and you happen to live within easy commuting distance of an infinity centre, then we could see why a Q30 might well appeal. 
carefully specify an A-Class, a BMW 1 Series or an Audi A3 and your car will feel impressive. Carefully specify this infinity to your taste though and it'll feel special. And if you can appreciate that difference, then you'll appreciate one of these.